<laughs> so I met Jay Fazette through um, another coach or consultant. She was running a event here in Calgary and Jay was doing what Jay does best, which was a joint venture. Hello, I'm Jay Fazette. I'm the founder of JVology, the perfect mix of people, fun and profit, a variety of other organizations, most of which have uh, done strong seven figures once we launched them. Uh, you might call me a serial entrepreneur, but the short version is this. I simply pursue that which I like, that which I'm interested in, and it seems invariably folks want to find out more about that. So that's that. <laughs> I knew of him from that point forward. And so he's a staple of the Calgary business community. His words, we had a circle and we bumped up a few times, but we never really overlapped. Until this one day when I was studying video production and I was doing the thing I always do, which is over invest into all the cool technology that I want to play with. Um, at a totally inappropriate time in my own business development. And I went and dropped like, I don't know, fifteen or twenty thousand dollars to buy a TriCaster. I uh, messaged Jay because I was like, I don't have any relationships and I'm terrible at making friends. When we were in our living room, I think on one of the breaks of shooting at our house, and you were on your phone lying on the couch and you're like, oh, I just hate it when people friend me on Facebook. <laughs> and I was like, I hate that too. I hate that. We were both, and then we're oh, like, yeah. We're both Aquarians, and Aquarians don't really want new friends, and we're commiserating about how it sucks when people friend us on Facebook because we don't want to be their friend. <laughs> yeah, we became besties in that moment. <laughs> That's when I just like kind of, ah, I get him. <laughs> I still don't like new friends. Uh, I, give me money. <laughs> I'll be your friend for money. The JV guy could totally fill this room for me. The most notable thing about that was his response was, wait, you bought a TriCaster? He was gonna book the Calgary Sports Hall of Fame and I've always been kind of ballsy, so I was like, the Calgary Hall of Fame. Um, I will not just do your event in my basement. I will pack all my up and I will bring it to your house and we will do whatever you're gonna go there to do in your kitchen, your living room, your whatever. Um, and if we fuck it up, you just don't have to pay me. He was like, okay. So, and then it's kind of like, you know, the story started there. These guys showed up, set everything up, and did the entire thing front to back with better quality than the stable studio and the Sports Hall of Fame. And it was like, we're gonna do more work then. Uh, Jay is really stubborn. He's my favorite kind of stubborn. I feel like there's a certain type of business owner called stubborn. A lot of business- There's another S word that also applies at times, but we'll leave that one aside. <laughs> uh, and I mean, there's nuance to this because it's like, I, I work with so many business owners who are stubborn in the wrong way. They're, they're stubborn about their problems. They're stubborn about how they have to do X before they do Y. They're stubborn about their vision needing to be true before they put in the work. They're stubborn about how like their calendar needs to be right. All these things that get in the way of progress and Jay's stubborn in a really great way, which is he's like, I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna do the thing that's necessary. And he goes and he does the thing that's necessary. You don't have stories about it. You're not like living in some fantasy in the future. You're, you know, committed and you execute. And like we talk about execution is strategy. We are making progress. Like it might be imperfect action, but it's action. And that action turns into results. And I think arguably 60% is better than zero. 70%, 80%, 90%, like it's all great. But I mean, in some cases, like 40%, 50% is better than zero. Like that's what's cool. You like come in here, we get to fuck around. And I, I like that a lot. And, and anyone that we've worked with knows that we, I, I often say to people, say, I make more mistakes than any other human being I know, and I take more risks than almost any other human being. And I'm fine with both. Yeah. And, 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 and that's what I like about working with you guys is that it's an environment where, it, it, it's, this is a paradox, because it's an environment where the expectations are high, and they're also low. So it's, it's this paradox, which is the expectation is high that we will give it our all, and we will. And we're also not hooked to, and 72 people had to buy or it's not a success. It's like, that's kind of stupid shit, you know? It's like, so it's this, this freedom to experiment and to learn and to create while we're figuring it out because that's the only way it actually gets figured out. We teach this, this idea that incremental progress is better than no progress. But there's a risk in saying incremental progress, which is like, but then you don't really have to try. We're, we're gonna play full out and we're gonna be good with a step that's actually possible. 
right? Like Seth Godin that's the, that's says. That's the high expectation. Like we're gonna, we are gonna make progress. There's no alternative, but to make, we're gonna make progress. Yeah, like I'm walking around this room and I'm like, cable manage this, like Windex the TVs. Like I have this tremendous sense of like what I want it to be. Like I have a vision for where I wanna go. I'm okay if we like and scrape our knees and like we get 90% of there, there, but like to express the vision and try to go there while being like in a safe environment. It's cool because there's so many business owners where it's not safe. Like you're totally safe to be with because you've got that psychology. And and it's probably because like you've got this, I don't know, sense of abundance or you've overcome your scarcity trauma, or maybe you never had it or whatever. But there's so many business owners out there who are like fed up. They need money tomorrow. They need a return on investment right now. Their return on ad spend is like a hundred dollars and they better get it back in the next week. Like, like they, they don't have room for maneuverability. So then the stakes are like really high and emotions get pinned. And it's just kind of like untenable, I guess, for like a small business, like Measurable Genius to win. Like even now we're 25 or 27 or I don't know, 30 people. And I'm still looking at the market and I'm like, Fuck, you, you really cannot expect me to deliver a level of polish that, that, I, that I think, you know, if you look at like the commercial world, people have, like if I go to the bank, like I expect, you know, clean counters and vacuum floors and <laughs> like the TD thing has to, and it's like, th those companies have thousands and thousands of team members. And then there's like measurable genius with 30 or there's, you know, entrepreneur on the other side of the video with one yeah. or three. And if you like think about what's possible in a day, it's like so low. So I'm even like, you know, we've grown four times in the last year and I'm like, we are now capable of a whole lot more than we were before. The, the psychology of the entrepreneur or the couple or the partner or the friend or the, you know, the, the psychology has to me more to do with my interest in working with them, with them than any other single thing. It, we're just in the process of doing away with a bunch of our low-end programs to eliminate the rearranging of deck chairs in the Titanic, uh, to uh, deal with people that I enjoy dealing with, fundamentally. But the truth of the matter is that it's not related to stage of development of business. It's actually related to psychology. Mm -hmm. it, it's related to who somebody can be, because if they can be at you know willing and eager, and if they have the right psychology, they'll be out of willing and eager in. 21 days. Yeah. Like, it, and if they have the wrong psychology, they'll be there in 21 years. Yeah. It's, it, it's that same. So, um, I do think that it's an interesting process that, you know, as Corey and I are working on this this uh, connection experience, the application form just to talk to us is 30 questions. Mm -hmm. And it's after 30 questions, like, okay, maybe we should talk. So, um, anyway, it, it's just an interesting piece that, that I hadn't. Uh, I think I was looking at a bunch of those elements far more mechanically when the truth of the matter is that we're, we're looking for the psychology of resourcefulness, we're looking for the psychology of accountability, we're looking for the psychology of courage to risk, we're looking for the psychology of um, acknowledging results. Like, there's a whole bunch of elements of the psychology, um, which is why I think I, you know, from a client's perspective, I like being here. Like, I was just having the flashback of <laughs> the lights going out in the studio the other, I don't know which, I don't know what we were shooting. We, we were here one time and it was kind of fun, it, well, fun, funny. funny. Um, but we, we were shooting in the other studio and... Oh, we blew a breaker. Yeah, you, you had changed some things and Warren didn't know and, and the breaker went out and the whole, the whole studio went black. Yeah. Like, completely black. Live TV nightmare. Yes, exactly. And, and, and I mean, for the most part, like, poor Warren, I thought the kid was going to die. Um, <laughs> oh, his stress was too old. Oh. Max. I, and I felt bad, it's like, Warren, we'll, we'll handle this, it's all right. So, you know, quite literally, I turned my laptop on and had my phone light <laughs> on, on my Zoom call with my, with my laptop. And I looked like a ghost and I'm continuing on with the live stream and and, and, and we just carry on. And, and like, there are 22 people shortly are, are fixing it. But like, literally, it was kind of funny. Like, yeah. like it was, but that wouldn't be funny to most folks. <laughs> no, no, there's people, there's people who would come in here and be like, you and f that I needed this live stream to work and I totally get it like I'm like I also really want your live stream to work like we're all figuring this out together right now <laughs> like I also didn't plan for the power to go out 
You and didn't? No. <laughs> and, and wow, oh boy, like, you're right. I didn't load the breaker to 90% before you came here. Like, <laughs> you are kind of my experiment. Um, and I try really hard to be clear about that, but f you know, Not everyone hears it. they don't. Customers yeah. are like, I heard what you said, and also I still, and so, like, that's, you know, growth for me. I get to learn. But you set a good example. <laughs> Hey guys, just wrapping up another great production here at the Measurable Genius Studios. Day was great. I mentioned this in another video, but it's all about teamwork here. I had a great production day, Jay had a great production day, but the reason that we both produce great stuff is because we know and we trust each other. Jay has my back and I have Jay's back and the entire team. So that contributes to a great live stream broadcast. You know, in the moment, any number of things could be happening. Some buttons get pressed in a different order. I'm not quite as prepared with something as maybe I should be, but you know what? At the end of the day, again, I trust him, and that's why we make great productions together. And all of my technology worked. So as long as all of my technology works, I'm usually pretty good. Jay's handsome, I think he could pull it off. Pull it off. Only fans. <laughs> what? Pull what? Only fans. Only fans. Oh, yes. You do live streams with just like feet? Get a close up of those babies. For our 27 <laughs> <laughs>